Hey, welcome back to another inductive study with Four Community, where we create community spaces so you can connect with others and hopefully you can connect with God too. You see that on the left side of the screen, I've got Evernote open. On the right side of the screen, I've got the Olive Tree app open and we're beginning with Mark chapter one, verse 21. And uh, I'm gonna guess we're gonna go down to 28. I'm not really sure. We're just gonna read it through and see where the natural break is. You see in Evernote, I've got the uh, inductive study questions open. What did I hear? What does it mean? What do I need to do with summary, pray and share? The inductive study is typically observation, interpretation, application, and those are the questions that we're going to uh, run through the text and see what we come up with. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So let's start reading together and we'll see how far we're going to, we're gonna get. Verse 21, New Living Translation. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of the religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit came out. Well, uh, why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. You know, I've, I've been to meetings where I've seen this this stuff happen and just like, I was like, wow, if the people had never seen that stuff before, this is going to get everybody's attention. But Jesus reprimanded him, be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Yeah. Uh, amazing, amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It, it has such authority. Now, even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region. I bet it would. I mean, this happens publicly. Somebody, uh, somebody manifests an evil spirit publicly. That's going to get everybody's attention. News is very likely going to spread quickly. All right, let's uh, let's run these questions through this uh, through this passage and see see what we come up with. Okay, so I ran the questions by the text and uh, didn't want to bore you with all just me thinking and thinking and thinking. It's not fun just to watch me think. So here's here's what I came up with with the observation, interpretation, application. Uh, here's what stood out to me in the text. Observation, what I hear. Okay, so Jesus began to teach. Of course, that's a, just right of the text. And people were amazed at his teaching. I really love the comment that um, he taught as one with authority. You know, I've been I've been in classes and I've had teachers that teach the material just because it's content on a page, but they uh, they don't really know the materials. So they're not really teaching with authority. They're not personally invested in it. I remember um, some of my high school classes, my high school computer science classes, where um, I almost had to teach myself how to code because my, my first computer science teacher was actually the math teacher because my school didn't have a computer science teacher. I don't know, some staffing issue beats me. And so, uh, so he wasn't really teaching with authority. You know, he's like, you better learn yourself because I have no idea what I'm doing. He was at least honest with the class and I appreciated his honesty. So here we have a bunch of teachers in, in the temple cults um, who are not teaching with authority. Here Jesus comes knowing the material personally because he is God teaching with authority. Love that comment. A man with an evil spirit cried out. Again, that's that's like totally crazy. Imagine imagine that happening. You're walking through Walmart and, and this guy starts talking to somebody who really knows God and somebody, suddenly somebody manifests an evil spirit right there in one of the aisles. That's going to get people's attention and there's going to be a Facebook buzz about the social media in that local area will blow up saying, what happened? Yeah, so so it it identified Jesus like the the evil spirit knew who he was right away. Like when Jesus came to Earth, um, he um, his glory was was hidden, right? Like we 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 don't see Jesus as God. We don't see him in all his glory. All throughout the book of Mark, what we're going to see is we're going to see a very human Jesus. It's the humanity of Jesus that's highlighted throughout Mark. It's not Jesus divinity. I mean, he is God, but his his glory is hidden right now. In, in his humanity, but but not to the demons. The demons see exactly through that and, and they know exactly who Jesus is. Jesus casts the spirit out like it's nothing for him. 
Uh, the audience was amazed. Of course, why wouldn't they be amazed? They wouldn't have seen anything like this. Uh, they, uh, they discussed Jesus. They recognized his authority. News about him traveled quickly throughout the area. I mean, again, you know, imagine this happened today. It's, the text says news traveled quickly, but if it's happened today, it would be quicker than the quickly that we saw in the gospel. Like instantly, we'd be seeing this on Facebook, I think. Like if this happened where, where I'm from, somebody would take out their phone, they'd record it, and they'd post it on some on one of the local community groups saying, look what just happened. You know, that, that kind of thing. So news would travel quickly. What does it mean? Here's what I came up with about what does it mean. Okay, so so I think we we need to keep in line here. I don't think I spelled that right. Uh, with hear, receive, follow, and agency. But in particular, uh, hear, receive, and follow. Uh, three of the four um, guiding principles that we see, the uh, the four-part thesis that we see developing through the Gospel of Mark here. Hear, receive, follow, three of the four. I see Jesus stepping into the role of the communicator. So Jesus here is demonstrating agency. And then we see um, we see moments also of hear, receive, and follow. Uh, he's he's got his new lead team around him. Remember that he just called the disciples, at least some of the disciples. He's got his his initial lead team. We talked about lead team in the last video, but they're not participating here. Okay, so they're still they're still following. They're still coming alongside. They're still being mentored by Jesus. Jesus has not yet released them into doing anything. They're uh, they're comrades at this point. They're following Jesus. They're watching what he's doing, and they're kind of learning from him. So they're his sidekicks right now. Without without an active public role, they're learning. Uh, Jesus demonstrates that God's present kingdom has authority over the world's kingdom. Now, let me just comment on that just a little bit. We really have two kingdoms in the world right now, two systems, I should say, at work in the world right now. We have the system of the kingdom of God, and we're going to see how that system is described throughout the Gospel of Mark. And just to give you a heads up, the system works differently than the world system. The kingdom of God operates on forgiveness and faith and love, love for God first, love for others second. Um, it's it's like two sides of the same coin, the, the love aspect. We have to love God and we have to love uh, each other as well. And that's, that's, spirit, that's true spirituality right there. Loving God, loving others, that's what true spirituality is. Anything else is just religion, right? Okay, so Jesus is the one with the authority, but he has invited people uh, into it who will also have this authority. So I'm thinking from last week that Jesus is building his lead, lead team. And in this text, it looks to me like Jesus is demonstrating um, what kingdom agency looks like and the authority that comes with kingdom agency and which system is greater because the system of the world, the other system at play right now, is a system that kind of says, if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. It's a system led by our human nature. And what is our human nature about? You know, I get up in the morning, I look at myself, say, self, what do you want to do today? My self looks back and says, well, do whatever that makes makes you happy. And then, and then we put, look back down on ourselves and say, that's a great idea, self, let's do that. We're very selfish people. We're not selfless people. It, it's it's not in our nature to love somebody else as much as as much as we love ourselves. It's not that's not human nature. Human nature is to disconnect from God and disconnect from others. It's the opposite of what true spirituality is. It's very it's very selfish. So there's two systems that work in the world right now and, and what she's doing, he's demonstrating that the system of God's kingdom is present right here and right now. And then he's bringing his leaders, his, his brand new lead team along with them and, and being a demonstration to them, I think, anyways, to how this system plays out and how they can demonstrate the kingdom of God. It's not entirely clear if the audience received and followed Jesus at this point. I mean, we see here, you know, the the one of the guiding principles of four community, one of the one of the, the four part thesis, the, the hearing, we see people hearing the gospel, but I don't see a demonstration of the text people receiving Jesus and following Jesus. I think this is brand new for for the audience, and, and I think that they're kind of shell-shocked a little bit about what's going on, kind of like we're still shell-shocked a little bit about all this COVID stuff. Now we're locked into our homes, and uh, we're a little bit shell-shocked. This, this crowd is shell-shocked at what they just saw. So we see here, not sure if we see received and followed, but the evidence would suggest that they didn't. Okay, so unlike the disciples who left all they had to follow Jesus, the audience remained an audience. 
And uh, there, there's another theme that's going to develop in the book of Mark, and that, that's the theme of the crowd. So Jesus goes to crowds. He's gone to this crowd who are the audience, and that crowd is filled with different kind of uh, people who uh, who are in different levels of, recepting, uh, of receiving or rejecting Jesus. And so the audience stays the audience. It doesn't look to me like they become followers. However, they did spread the word about him. So we still see the hearing of the gospel moving forward. You know, sometimes, you know, just a little personal side here, sometimes when you share the message of the gospel with somebody, when you tell somebody about Jesus, uh, there might not be any fruit in that person. They may not be receptive at that moment or ever to, to Jesus, but they may actually almost pay that forward a little bit. They may actually tell others that this guy talks about Jesus, this guy said something about Jesus, and that may actually spark a seed in some spark a seed of faith in somebody else. So this is, I think, what's happened here. I don't know that they've actually received Jesus for themselves, but they are now. Um, being communicators of the gospel, secondhand communicators of the gospel, not having experienced the kingdom personally themselves because they're not in it, but still they're spreading the gospel. It kind of reminds me of people who want to attend church but not be affected by the church later in, in the week. You know, people who kind of get saved, so to speak, on a Sunday but remain unaffected uh, after the moment when they when they receive Jesus. And, and I pastored for more than 25 years. I've seen this and it breaks my heart uh, because people are, sometimes I think people are fooling themselves a little bit or their maturity level just never comes up enough to to see them really engage with Jesus. I think that's probably what it is most for the most part. People come to church, people hear about Jesus, they'll, um, they'll want to connect with him, they'll pray, but their lives during the week are totally unaffected by anything that goes on in church. It's like it's like what happens in church and what happens when they're not in church are mutually exclusive. And that's just, that's not true spirituality. That's not living within God's kingdom. That's like dipping your toe in, in the water and, and trying it out. And unfortunately, it's very immature. We want people to grow in their maturity. And it looks like this is what's going on with the audience right now. It's a very immature um, initial kind of uh, reception to Jesus, maybe. Uh, followership is lacking in this passage. Okay, so hearing is present. Now remember, uh, I'm communicating, I'm talking here about the four-part thesis that we see in the first part of Mark, where Mark is developed this thesis where um, missional uh, activity, kingdom activity includes hearing, uh, uh, taking a moment that somebody receives, um, then following Jesus and stepping into agency. The four, anyways, the four-part thesis for, for Mark. So followership, you know, that whole process of all those four things coming together and then stepping out as as an agent it's it's lacking in this past we don't see the full-blown followership here hearing is present though the key moment between hearing and followership is receiving i should say following the key moment between hearing and following is receiving and they don't they don't receive jesus if you don't receive jesus you can't follow Jesus. I mean, you kind of can. You're you're kind of like following as like a Facebook follower. You're kind of interested to hear what they're saying, but we're not talking about a real relationship here. We're not talking about any depth here. So it looks to me like the audience, even though they saw a demon come out, they chose not to receive. Just my opinion. Although I'm not really sure if that's really the intent of the passage anyways. So there, there's a clear demonstration of God's present kingdom and its authority and power over the kingdom of the world and its powers that back it. So I'm using the word kingdoms here, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the world, and I'm really talking about systems, like there's there's a system of, of the kingdom of God, and that system is based on real relationships, uh, lots of forgiving, even pre-forgiving others, um, loving God first, loving others. That's a system that God's kingdom is based on, and we demonstrate that system when we love God first and love others second, and we choose forgiveness and faith. Uh, the world system is demonstrated quite differently. It's demonstrated by a, a lot of self-interest. Now, people still do good stuff. You know, there's there's good in us. I mean, we're made in the image of God. So we're still capable of doing really great and wonderful things. We're still capable of loving. But generally speaking, that's not the way we live our lives. Generally speaking, we have moments where we shine. But for the most part, we're quite selfish. 
Uh, for the most part, it, we're trying to meet our own needs and not our neighbors' needs. We go to work so that fa so that food goes on our tables, not so that food goes on our neighbors' tables, right? We uh, we put locks on our doors so that our family is protected. We're not protecting the families to either side of us, right? We don't we don't go out of way to put locks on their doors. We lock our door, you know. So we're we're, we're kind of self. We're inward focused. We're self focused. And that's not the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we love others as much as we love we love ourselves. And so we, that's the demonstration of the kingdom of God. The world demonstrates something very, very differently. So there's two kingdoms at work here. What do I need to do about it? Here we go. First, if I'm struggling, if you're struggling, but I'm, I'm just speaking to for myself, okay? If I'm struggling to engage in followership, if I'm struggling to engage as a follower of Jesus, the key is likely found at reception. That's that's where it is. If if I'm tr if I'm having trouble uh, giving my first and my best to Jesus every day, if I've never made that transition where yeah okay I've heard something about Jesus and now when I wake up in the morning I'm really interested. What can I do to to demonstrate my love for God and what can I do to demonstrate my love for others and walk in a way. That's 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 demonstrating that that kingdom of love, that system of love is present right here and right now and has power and authority. If I haven't gone to the level of following Jesus, it's probably because I need to go back to the level of receive. Have I actually received Jesus or have I just given him some sort of head knowledge? Have I intellectually acknowledged something about Jesus, some truth about Jesus, some reality about Jesus, but I've stopped right there, and I haven't invested myself personally. Jesus isn't my treasure. I haven't put any money into Jesus. I haven't scheduled anything around Jesus. You know, it's the reception of Jesus, really, that, that's lacking in that in that moment then. If I see someone who is not following, it's possible that the problem lies at the receiving stage. So if you see somebody who, um, you know, they say that they're a Christian, but they're not really living for Jesus, not following Jesus. And you might actually say that person is a, is a hypocrite. They say one thing, doing, doing another thing. Okay, let's have some grace and mercy. Remember that we're in the kingdom of God. Let's demonstrate some agency. Let's demonstrate that we're in a system of love. And, and then in love, go to that person and just help bring them back to receiving. Um, just confirm the gospel with them, share Jesus all over again, and just try to bring them back to the point, that initial that initial point of reception that, listen, maybe we just need to go back and let's just talk about what it means to really receive Jesus. Because to really receive Jesus, you know, it might start with an intellectual acknowledgement, but there's also a personal investment here, right? Like I can open a bank account uh, and I could just have a bank account, but it's not really my bank account and, and I don't really care about it until I start putting money in it. Right. Once I put money in it, then, oh, then I feel that's my bank account because my heart follows my treasure. I'm investing something into it that's valuable to me. And now and now I'm going to be interested in my bank account. Right. It's the same with Jesus. It's so initially we might we might come to an intellectual acknowledgement that, yeah, OK, Jesus does exist. But then we have to start investing in Jesus. We start have to give him, give him our valuable stuff. And I don't just mean tithing and giving our money. That's not it. But I mean, I need to start thinking about, OK, what does it look like for me to give Jesus my first and my best? Because my first and my best is going to look very different than your first and your best, because we're very different people. Right. We've got different strengths, different interests different weaknesses, right? So your first and your best and my first and my best are going to be looking very differently. But that's part of what it means just to be at that receiving level. When I receive Jesus, it's more than just an intellectual head knowledge. It's also at this point, I need to invest in Jesus with, with my whole self. And it's that, that decision to invest in Jesus with my whole self and start giving him my first and my best. Then that creates the desire to follow him inside of me because my heart follows my my church invest in Jesus. So if you see somebody who's who's lagging on their walk with Jesus and following Jesus, go back to them and bring them back to that moment of reception. Let's talk about what it means to receive Jesus. Let's talk about placing your faith again maybe in in Jesus. I would also think that you would just keep on doing that 
until followership and following Jesus is there's evidence of that, right? So, so bring them into your, your discipleship group, bring them into, bring them alongside with, uh, of them and say, you know, I, I think that I'm going to start doing my devotion on Facebook. Now I'm going to start up a little Facebook group, uh, go through some Bible stuff and, and you and I, why don't we do this together? We'll just comment every day, comment every two days, whatever. Why don't we study the Bible together? Okay. Second, I can, I can be bold when communicating the gospel. Not everyone will receive, not everybody received Jesus right here. You know, actually, it doesn't look like anybody received Jesus right here. So I'm not really sure if in today's culture, if in today's church culture, and within our pastor mindset, maybe of what that is today, if we'd consider this a win. You know, if this was a pastor in this moment, they might, yay, I cast out a demon, but did it do anything for the kingdom of God? Well, numerically speaking, no, not at this point, because nobody Nobody said yes to Jesus. Okay, so we got a win that a demon was cast out, but but that's that's not the case. That's not where our boldness comes from. So I can be bold communicating the gospel, knowing I know that not everyone received, but the presence of God's kingdom includes the power over this world's present kingdom. Okay, so where there is kingdom clashing, where we are promoting a system, and that's what that's what being a Christian is. This is what Christianity is. It's, it's faith in Jesus, and it's the promotion of a system that's based on love, love for God and love for others. It's a world changer because it has authority, more authority than this world system. So you and I can continue to go back and forth and you do me wrong, I do you something wrong, or you do me something even more wrong, and we continue to compound uh, you know, sin against sin against sin, bad against bad against bad, you know, but you know what, one of us just has to stop, say, I'm getting off this crazy cycle, and, and I'm going to start demonstrating love to you, and that might freak you out, make you go away, or it might inspire you to uh, to do something in uh, likewise in, in return, whatever, but the kingdom of God, the system of God has authority, more power than this world's system. Now, audiences should not be considered kingdom strength. This This is in my mind, okay, right here is where the Gospel of Mark begins to help us discern what the crowd is. Because the, the church game, the Christian game, the, the um, being an evangelist game, that kind of thing, the evangelism game, you know, it's, it's not a game. Um, however, we, we get into this mindset where, you know, when I talk about evangelism, I must be talking about all about numbers. No, we're, we're, let's not look at it this, this way. Audiences are not considered a kingdom strength. Audience is the target for kingdom activities. The larger the crowd, you know, if you have a large crowd, it does not mean you're successful. You mean it may mean you're successful, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're successful. We're going to see in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus actually didn't like large crowds. Now, that's not because he didn't like large crowds, and we're going to see that later. I don't want to sort of take all the wind out of the sail here, but there's something negative that happens in large crowds when your crowds, be, crowds become large based on the wrong foundation. Large crowds are awesome when they're based on a great foundation. Large crowds are horrible when they're not based on a good foundation. We're going to talk about the foundation of crowds. We're going to talk about the role of crowds in, in the Gospel of Mark as we open up the text more in the, in the chapters ahead. Just because we have an audience doesn't mean that those people are followers or will even help to advance the kingdom. As a matter of fact, in the North American culture, we have a really hard time advancing the kingdom um, because uh, evangelicals generally don't share their faith. I mean, we we kind of do, but you know, the evangelical approach is is to be a good person and to demonstrate that we're good people. And maybe if if people see that we're good people, they'll be inspired to to ask us something. Canadians in general, though, are good people, so we're just being Canadian. We're just you know, Christians who might say my good my good works are going to get people to ask me about Jesus. You know what? Canadians are good people. You know. It's, it's pretty tough to come across a Canadian that's just just a, a bad person. You know, it's Canadians are generally decent people. So, so the the if you're a good person, you're just a Canadian. Okay, the the audience, you know, they they may be the audience who will never become followers, and that's what that's what the Book of Mark has to warn us about here. Um, don't don't be so crazy about a big crowd. 
they may not all be followers. They may just be there for, for the show. And then if they are, that's okay. If they are, just bring them back to sharing the gospel and bring them back to that moment of receiving. Don't mistake the large crowd for success. You know, assess that large crowd. And if they aren't really engaged in following Jesus, just bring them back to the gospel message and keep on bringing them back to the moment where they will receive Jesus. As a follower, I follow Jesus. I embrace followership, like the whole gamut of what it means to be, uh, uh, you know, follow. So that's, that's hear, receive, follow, agency. And then agents will, will communicate. They'll give an opportunity for people to receive. And then they'll, they'll mentor somebody into becoming an agent, and then they'll be releasing that person into agency. So as a follower, I follow Jesus. Um, I embrace followership and Jesus' mission. He demonstrates the communication of the gospel and the power of God's kingdom. So as a follower engaged in followership, I also need to communicate the gospel and demonstrate the power of God's present kingdom. And that's agency right there. Agency is I demonstrate that there is a system in the world right now that's uh, that's called, identified in the Gospel of Mark and through the New Testament as the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is right here and right now. It's a system that Christians belong to, that Christians value, that Christians want to live in and live out and invite other people into. And that system says this. That system says the entry into the system is faith and belief. We we believe in Jesus and we and we express faithfulness in Jesus. We follow him. And then the demonstration of that system is that we love God first and we love others second and we forgive other people as well. And that system that, that Christians want to belong to and do belong to, and that we're following Jesus, that system has greater power, more power than the system that's already in place in the world, which tends to be um, self, self-centered. And entropic. The world system is entropic. It is failing. It is fading. And a system based on love is far superior. So with the proclamation of the gospel comes the demonstration of power. It seems to come at moments of overt conflict. This is another thing that we're going to start seeing throughout throughout Mark. And it slowly, it slowly ramps up. As Mark starts to reveal the nature of the crowd, we're going to see kingdom clashing. And during kingdom clashing, that's that's the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God, which are both present realities. The system of the world and the system of God, both present realities. We're going to see system clashing, kingdom clashing, as the kingdom of God the system that love God first and love others second, that system of love, it, it highlights that there's a better way to live. And the system that's not based on love that, you know, again, you know, we do, we have these moments where we do great things, but generally we're pretty self-centered. Okay. So that, that system that's already here pushes against that because um, it's, it's pretty hard. If you would acknowledge that you're selfish and you just like your me time, you like your cave time, I want to relax, you know, I don't want anybody to bug me. When somebody comes in and says, oh, I love you and you need to start loving everybody else, there's a reaction to that. Now, I'm not suggesting to Christians to present the gospel like that, but there's a reaction to that. You know, even me, when I'm in my in my downtime, when I'm in my cave, in my basement, shooting darts, I've got a dartboard down here, I like to shoot darts sometimes, or whatever it is I'm doing to get back. I don't want somebody, somebody knocking on my door while I'm trying to take a break and saying, I love you. And at this moment, I want to teach you how to love others too. I'm like, get in my face, freak. Okay, so so the two kingdoms, there really is kingdom clashing, and it really comes to blows in the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to see how that comes to blows in the Gospel of Mark. And in those moments of conflict, that tends to be where there's demonstrations of power. One of the questions that the book of Mark answers fairly decently is this. Why don't we see more miracles in the church today? Why don't we see more healings in the church today? I, I want to see God's power moving in the church today. Why is that not happening? You know what? The Gospel of Mark answers that very, very clearly. And the Gospel of Mark has a distinct answer that's different than some of the other answers we might see in the New Testament. And if you want to know what that answer is, you keep on following me through this through this series. And it's going to be very clear to you as we, as we uh, reveal this text together, what's really going on. Let's take a look at the summary. Uh, As a follower of Jesus, I follow his example to communicate the gospel and demonstrate his present kingdom, the, the system that's based on love and forgiveness. I also understand that the people I communicate to may never become followers. You know, they'll they'll hear the message. They might have some sort of intellectual acknowledgement, 
that there's some truth about Jesus, but they never personally invest into Jesus. And they never put their treasure, the, their, their most valuable stuff into Jesus, and, and our hearts follow our treasure, so we don't really commit to following Jesus. We're, at the, we're, we're always stuck at that level of will I receive him or not, and we never grow. Until people demonstrate followership, the whole gamut, and also just following Jesus, actually. I need to keep communicating the, communicating the gospel to lead them back to an opportunity to receive. You know, I, I think um, I think of the context of youth ministry. Um, I, I've, I've done a lot of youth ministry, and I love youth ministry. It's I love teenagers. They're a lot of fun, and doing youth ministry is a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's insane as well, and you take a beating for doing for ministry to teenagers, but still, it's 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 great. It's great as well. Um, but I think that in youth ministry, particularly in junior high ministry um, programs. You can grow numbers. Some, if you're doing things well, you can grow a number quite quickly. You can you can draw a large crowd. That large crowd that you're drawing, you know, there's some success in it. In that you're doing a good job at promoting. In that you now have a great audience. However, that large crowd isn't um, the be all and end all, and it's not the final deal. If that large crowd doesn't know Jesus, then that's awesome. You now have a fishing pool. You know, because Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Let's go to crowds now. So Jesus' crowd now, what's he doing with that crowd? He's, he's, he's casting his net. He's communicating the gospel. So if you have, so in youth ministry, when, when I have managed to, to bring in a large crowd and they're socializing with one another and they're friends with one another, I take that opportunity not to boast. I mean, it's when I was younger, it'd be easier to boast. Look at how big my youth group is. Oh, I got a hundred kids. How many do you have? Ah, poor you. You know, you could do that, but that kind of sucks. Um, take a moment to uh, to say, okay, now that this is just a fishing pool, that's all that it is. It's not a demonstration of my success or failure. It's a fishing pool, and that's all. And actually, this fishing pool has piranhas, and it can eat me alive. Okay, that's the crowd. The crowd is a fishing pool of piranhas that want to eat you alive. And you're going to see that a little bit more in in, in Mark. Okay, so if you got a big group like you can in youth ministry. Bring it back to the gospel. Keep on sharing the gospel with them and keep on giving opportunity for them to receive Jesus. Okay, so I need to keep communicating the gospel and, and lead them back to an opportunity to receive. Let's, okay, so here's what I wrote down for my, my prayer time here. Uh, Jesus, please help me to be a better follower. Please help me to communicate the gospel and to demonstrate your present kingdom. So my prayer for this passage is that I would more deeply step into agency. I would be a better kingdom agent, a more effective king, kingdom agent. And as Jesus went and sought out crowds and uh, and formed crowds by demonstrating the present reality of God's kingdom, we, and he did that by showing that he loves God first and loves others second, and also by communicating the gospel. It's both a communication and a demonstration. That's agency. Agency is both communicating and demonstrating. It's not one or the other. It's not telling people, you know, something about Jesus and not living it. It's not living in a certain way and not telling it. Agency is both. It's the communication, the demonstration that God's kingdom, the system based on forgiveness of love is right here and right now. And you can be a part of it too. Excuse me. And you can be a part of it too. Okay, so I've got a whole share thing that I've also done that I'm not going to do here because I think the video is long enough. Uh, join me in the next video if you haven't already, which is the, the Bible talk for this Sunday. And uh, and that's it. it. Listen, if you don't already have a place to connect with other people who want to talk about Jesus and other people who just want to connect with other people, I've been hosting Zoom meetings for my neighborhood. I've been hosting Zoom meetings on anybody on Facebook that just wants to hang out and have a coffee with me. I'm fine for that. If you just want to hang out with me and have a coffee, I will give you a Zoom link and we'll just connect over coffee, over whatever, you know, like Coke. Diet Coke, whatever, I don't care. Yeah, I just call it coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I drink tea, you know, whatever. So if you just want to hang out, I'm very happy to hang out with you. I'll send you a personal Zoom link. Which is, hey, how you doing? Whatever. Um, if you don't have a if you don't have a, a community where you're growing as a believer or you're interested in the figure who Jesus is, please consider for community. You know, I'll send you a link because for community, we're we're all about creating a community spaces where you can socialize with people, that you can make friends with people, you can do life together with people, you know? Because remember, sp true spirituality is both loving God and loving each other. True spirituality is relational. It's about relationships. So we're creating community spaces. It's all about relationships so that you can, you can connect with others 
And I'm really hoping that you're going to connect with God too, but I can't force it on you, right? It's your choice. If you want to connect with God, that's your choice, and I can't force it on I'm just going to receive it any way you come to me. That's all. So if you haven't connected with the community yet, if you just want to hang, reach out. Believe it or not, I will send you a link to a Zoom, and you know, five minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, we'll just, we'll just hang out. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, see you next time.